Suspense. And the producer of CBS Radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. They call themselves the Beat Generation, by which they do not mean defeated. They mean beatific, which is to say, blissful. They're cool, man. They're way out there. They dig jazz, which has no melody, and poetry, which makes no sense. At least to the rest of us squares. They're kids seeking an answer. And to the beat generation, the answer seems to be found in inaction, in non-feeling. They couldn't care less. But face a beat cat with reality, face him with murder, and what happened? Listen, listen then, as Dennis Day stars in Like Man, Somebody Dig Me, which follows in just a moment. Like Man, Somebody Dig Me, starring Mr. Dennis Day. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Man, like crazy. Man, I dig everything. I dig Zen and underarm deodorant. I dig Elvis Presley and Sputnik. I even dig people that drive right on by when I'm hitchhiking. People call me the tennis shoes. Because I wear them and because I'm always on the move. But mostly because I'm cool, man. I could stand out here in the middle of this desert all day. And you know something? It wouldn't bother me. You want to lift? Hey, I'm with you, chick. How far are you going? I just stick with Route 66, man, on to the ocean. We're on our way to Las Vegas. You going to California? Like I wrote a poem, man. I want to read it to the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean? Well, I already read it to the Atlantic. Well, if you read it to the Atlantic, why bother to read it to the Pacific? Man, have you ever read a poem to the Atlantic in January? Well, no, I, uh... Oh, man... We almost didn't stop for you. You know, most people won't take a chance on hitchhikers these days. Yeah, you're lucky we picked you up. And look, man, I don't know what you want, but I ain't got it. I got no rose to pin on you, no medals. Big, I just stand by the road with my thumb up. If you want to pick me up, cool. If you want to drive on by, too cool. If you want to stop the car and let me out, that's okay with me. Because, man, I'm cool. I just don't care. You're the driver, and I'm just along for the ride. You dig? <laughs> I'm just making conversation. Uh-huh. If you're going to Vegas, man, you'll have to turn off at Kingman. I don't dig Vegas. Vegas is the squares. Mm. Right now, I'm going to get some shut-eye. Oh, I'm tired, man. The cops run me out of town last night for filling the fire to keep warm. Oh, I'm tired, man. You mean just for building a fire? Like, how was I to know all that wood was somebody's house? I pulled down the lids of my eyes and make like I was asleep. But it was all I could do to keep from busting out laughing. It was kicks, man. These squares were real kicks. Walter, turn on the radio. Okay. Walter, I don't like that man. Oh, Mary, don't be... Your voice down. Do you want to wake him up? I think he's crazy and I think he's dangerous. Honey, he's perfectly harmless. I see his type on the road a lot lately. He's kind of a fad. They call themselves the beat generation. They pretend that nothing matters to them anymore. They just drift. He's harmless. Well, just the same. I wish we hadn't... We interrupt matinee melodies to bring you another bulletin on the killer who's been terrorizing southern Nevada. Walter, listen. The hatchet maniac's fourth victim was just found brutally murdered in the small Nevada town of Searchlight, not far from the Arizona border. Only one eyewitness has seen the killer. She described him as being medium height, dark coloring, wearing a red nylon jacket and tennis shoes. Walter, Use your head, Mary. You're in Arizona. But the description fits. And he could be carrying anything in that bag of pins. You want to look in a bag like? I thought you were asleep. Don't jump. Stay cool. I'll put it in the front seat and you can look see. <laughs> Man, it don't even zip a shut. So what do you dig inside? 
a bottle of wine from the supermarket, typewritten copies of my poems, a clean shirt with a dirty collar. Man, I travel so light I don't even take toothbrushes. So what am I going to do with a hatchet? <laughs> Man, there's one thing about squares. They never, ever learn. Buddy, where do you want to get out? Anywhere. We've got to get some gas, too. That's strange. The streets are almost deserted. Oh, with that maniac running loose, everybody's probably locked up indoors. Well, shouldn't we have turned off by now? We're just about out of town. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a place. See? Pop, food, and gas. Look, why don't we pull in here and ask and, and get some gas at the same time? I don't see anybody. Look, maybe they're closed. Lights are still on. I'll go inside. Don't leave me, Walter. There's nothing to be afraid of, man. Well, I'm certainly not going to stay out here alone. Why, thanks, Jake. Walter! Like, who was I to stay in the car when the party's inside? Just as we go through the front door, some cat hustles in from the kitchen, wiping his hands on his apron. Oh, there you are. I didn't hear you drive up. Walter, you got blood on your hands. Mary, please don't be lying. Tomorrow's special is chicken and dumplings. Somebody has to kill the chickens. That's why I didn't hear you drive up. Oh. We need some gas. Yeah, man. Like gasoline? Man, like right away I got eyes to see this cat ain't nobody's pop. And he ain't never run no gas station before. What do you think? I'm going to tell these squares? I drop my bag at the end of the counter and then I walk around to the back of the station and scrub some of the dirt off my face. It takes me quite a while to scrub, but I come back around the station just in time to see the two squares drive off down the road. And what do you think happens? Instead of turning right to go to Vegas, they turn to the left. And when I come in the cafe, I surprise this cat behind the counter. Oh, <laughs> hey, man, you walk up on people like too quiet. That's why they call me the tennis shoe. Look, you're hip. They call me the cat. I can tell why. Hey. Where'd those two squares go? Mexico. Mexico? They said they were going to Vegas. Yeah, I know. They asked me where to turn, and I told them. If they drive long enough, they'll wind up in Mexico. <laughs> Man, you are too cool. <laughs> I leave the cat, and I'm walking west on 66 with my thumb ready, 10, maybe 15 minutes at the most, when the squad car with the flashing lights screams up to a stop. Oh, right away, they pull out those big, shiny pistols. And right away, I know what they're thinking. This is really going to be crazy. Hold your hands in the air. Man, like always. Hold them up high if you don't want your head blown off. That's better. Let us search him, George. Easy, man. I laugh when people do that. <laughs> He's clean. What do you got in the bag? I got goodies for Grandma. You did, Grandma? Step away from it. See what's in the bag, George. Okay. My God. What is it? We've got him. Well, I've got who, man? This is the hatchet killer, Charlie. I look over to see what's in the bag, and I almost flip. There on top of a clean shirt with a dirty collar, on top of all that cool poetry, on top of an almost full half bottle of wine, there's this hatchet I've never seen before. Man, like I'd laugh. But the hatchet is all bloody. you, man. I'm the tennis shoe. I don't like your flip attitude. So flip, man, flip. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but you're in bad trouble. You've been caught with a murder weapon and no identification and no alibi. I told you my story, but you don't dig it. You expect me to believe that you've just been passing through this state? Don't forget that Bronson cat in Gallup, New Mexico. He's all the alibi I need. I was swinging at a party at his place last night. 
All night. He digs me, so I'm not shook. This is a new kick, Daddy-O. I ain't never been up for murder before. Oh, too cool. Uh, Kingman Sheriff's Office. Yeah, he's here. It's a Gallup police. Hello. Hey, you got him there with you? Uh, put him on. Uh, will you shut up so I can hear? Hello? Mr. Branson, this is the Kingman Sheriff's Office. I got a man here that says you know him. Was at a party at your place last night. Calls himself the tennis shoe. What? Just a minute. Said you never heard of you. Hey, let me talk to him. Hello, man. Yeah, man. Hey, this is me. The tennis shoe. And you, like I know. Well, tell the man. I would, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> hey, Branson. Look. Uh, this is for real. They're trying to pin a murder on me. <laughs> Crazy, man. Ah, you way out there. Way out. Murder. What kicks? <laughs> like, man, will somebody dig me? Now, do you want to tell me why you killed him? Yeah, but I didn't. You were carrying a hatchet that killed five people. How did it get in your bag? The cat must have put it there. Who's that? I told you already. You know, the guy that was at Pop's place. Who else saw him beside you? I told you. The two squares. What give me the lift? The man and woman you sent in the wrong direction? I didn't send him in the wrong direction. The cat did. He's cool. He did it for a kick. You killed the old man for a kick? No, no, I'm innocent. It's all a collection of circumstances. I'm just a victim of the world, man. Take him down and book him for first-degree murder. What's going on out there? Yeah, most everybody in town's out front. They're yelling for the hatchet killer. You aren't going to let him in here, Chief, huh? Yeah, if they make up their mind they're coming in, it's going to take more than me to stop them. Well, you can't let them get me. Hey! Hey! Out of here! Hey! Don't pay any attention to them, Daddy-O. I'm going to go out there and try and talk them out of it. Yeah. friends and neighbors. I know how you all felt about Pop Daniels. He was a friend of mine, too. But I know you all well enough to know that you all want to see justice done. That's what we brought the rope for. We want the killer. We want the killer. Now quiet down a minute. Quiet down. It's like a nightmare. A million hands pull and drag me out of the jail across the street. And into this sleepy little park in the center of town. I try to laugh, man. I mean, it's a new kick being carried around like that. I try to laugh. Yeah, but no laugh comes out. And then I see this rope. The one with the long knot in it. And all of a sudden, I know that the only cat that's going to be swinging at this party is me. <laughs> That man at Pop's place to give us the wrong turn. Oh, I should have paid more attention to my sense of direction. <sighs> All that driving, and here we are right back in Kingman. I knew there was nobody in the street when we came through, and... Well, now, look at that crowd over there in the park. Probably a political rally of some sort. No. Look at that road. They're going to hang somebody. Hey, old-timer. Yes, yeah, sir? What's going on? They caught that fellow what's been going around chopping up people over in Nevada. But he sure made a mistake when he killed old Pop Daniels here in Kingman this afternoon. We don't put up with that kind of Look thing. Look at that man they're putting the rope on. Isn't that the That's same... our hitchhike. They're making a terrible mistake. He was with us all afternoon. Walter, where are you going? They'll hang him if I don't stop him. Come back here, they'll hang you too. Hey, man, give me a break. Wait. I didn't do it. Wait. This man is innocent. I'm a here. I'm a fool. He did me. He's innocent. I can prove it. I am a Hold me. Give me a chance and listen to me. If you hang him, you'll hang an innocent man. I can prove he's innocent. Because he was with my wife and me all afternoon. Man, am I glad to see you. After 
after that, it really wasn't any trouble. They told the cops where I'd been. The cops were mad because I wasn't the killer. But there wasn't anything they could do about it. And the next morning, I walk out of jail into the sunshine and the fresh air. Like, man, man, it's really great to be alive. And the world looks good. Even people look good. I walk down the main drag, and in less than five blocks, I pass a little kid that tries to con me into buying up all his newspapers so he can go home early. A neon sign that screams good food and dance. A hundred cars driven by guys that don't own them. And no apology for some guy I bumped into. And then I start wondering, what am I so gone about? Uh, young man. Yeah, like? I wonder if you'd be so kind. You see, my daughter let me out of her car. She told me the optometrist was straight ahead. And somehow I got turned around. Would you lead me to the right door? Optometrists? Yes, I broke my glasses this morning. Well, Grandma, I don't know how you did it, but you drifted yourself down about two doors. Here, take my arm. Oh, thank you so much. You're such a kind young man. Hey, watch it. There's a step here. Oh, my, it's cool in here. Well, I didn't know you were hip, Grandma. And what nice music on the radio. Yeah, Mom, that's way out. Now, look. Here's a chair. You sit down. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my, whatever would I have done without you? Shh. There's a sign over there that says, Quiet, please. I'll tell the receptionist you're here. Don't go away. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. Are you one of the family or a friend of the deceased? Oh, it's uh, my mother. Yeah, she doesn't want to view the body. She just wants to sit here and meditate about the dearly departed. I see. Yeah, yeah. Just leave her alone with her thoughts. I'll be by and pick her up in a while. We do our best to be a comfort in a time of trial and stress. Man. <laughs> I get out of the street and I hot foot it way out in the desert before I fall down and bust down laughing. <laughs> hey, I think of that old chick sitting in that bureau parlor waiting for a pair of glasses. And I just about crack up, man. Oh, I crack. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about squares, man, they just never, ever learn. <laughs> in William N. Robeson's production of Like Man, Somebody Dig Me, written by George Bamber. In tonight's story were Lillian Bias, Bill Quinn, Jack Moyles, Paul Fries, and Charles Seal. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Miss Agnes Moorhead, starring in Head Shrinker, another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. 